But anyway, young Jack Johnson was now the official, in some words, termed as the colored heavyweight champion of the world. Some people refer to him as the Negro heavyweight champion of the world. And they will come back to him. His name was George. <coughs> anyway, immediately after, about well, one year after 1904, he issued a challenge to the real heavyweight champion of the world, whose name was Jim Jeffries, who at the time was on his way to an undefeated record as heavyweight champion of the world. He was considered to be unbeatable. Jim Jeffries, James J. Jeffries, had defeated Bob Fitzsimmons for the world title a few years earlier. Bob Fitzsimmons had defeated James J. Corbett a few years earlier that he fought Bob Fitzsimmons. And James J. Corbett had been defeated by the great John L. Sullivan. John L. Sullivan, he became the very first acknowledged heavyweight champion in the world, whose motto was, I can lick any man in the house. <laughs> he never did visit or box in the Oak Lawn area. <laughs> Anyway, in 1904, Jack Johnson issued a challenge to Jim Jeffries. Fight me. If you're the real heavyweight champion, fight me. <coughs> well, Jim Jeffries had political protocol and decided that I'm not going to fight an African American. So he didn't refer to him as an African American. The time kept moving on, kept moving on. Jack Johnson finally was able to get a fight with for the next year. I digress. The following year, 1905, Jim Jeffries, under pressure to fight Jack Johnson, retired as an undefeated heavyweight champion, the first to ever do so. The first, not the last. Okay, he retired as the, uh, well, follow me, step by step, he retired as the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world. Meanwhile, Jack Johnson kept on going west. He went so far west that he wound up east. As to say, he was in Australia. While he was in Australia, he reeled, reeled off several wins in a row. And there had been a round robin tournament of sorts, four people competing in a competition series to determine who would be the successor to heavyweight champion Jim Johnson. A Canadian named Tommy Burns won that elimination tournament. And in December of 1908, he was offered $30,000, which was some serious money in 1908, to fight Jack Johnson. On the day after Christmas, the little boy who had been thrown out of Texas, barred from Texas, might as well, might as well say, got our Christmas present one day late. Jack Johnson scored a 14-round knockout over Tommy Burns to become the heavyweight champion of the world. Now, Jack Johnson, in sort of a racist era, was not only the first black heavyweight champion, he flaunted. You see, he had these set of golden teeth over the side of his mouth to replace the teeth that he had lost earlier. And he had this golden walking cane. And he would walk the streets of all cities in America. He liked, he preferred Chicago and Los Angeles. <laughs> and he would walk and he would smile what was known as, became known as the golden smile. It matched the color of his walking cane. Now he had a habit that further infuriated the white folk of America. Jack Johnson was known to keep company, sometimes very intimate company, with some white ladies. Among them, screen started Lupe Velez, Mae West, as well as the German spy, Mata Hari. And then, well, later on in his life, before it was all over, Jack Johnson was married four times, three times to white women. One time to a lady, his first white wife, committed suicide six months later. Jack Johnson stirred up controversy. There became this hue and cry all over America for a white man to come out of hiding, to come out and take on this fearsome, loathsome black man and take the title back to white America. The plea went out for Jim Jeffries to come out of retirement and face Jack Johnson. Finally, a fight was arranged. Now, I'm going to digress just a little bit because you don't just come in 
Let's say someone were to come here to deal with regular tapes and try to have a fight. Well, it wouldn't really be worth it unless somebody was going to put up some money to pay for the guys who were going to fight. So there's this old boy from Texas. He grew up, he actually was born in Clay County, Missouri in 1871. His name was George Rickard. George, let me pronounce that again. George Rickard. George Rickard came to Texas early in life. He lived up in uh, near Gainesville. His dad had a ranch in Henrietta, Texas. Not to be confused with Henrietta, uh, Oklahoma. And at the age of eight, hired on as a wrangler for cattle ranches. He went on several, several cattle drives, going up back and forth up the Chisholm Trail until at the age of 20, he decided, man, this is too hard to work. I think I want to be a, do an easy job. So he decided, I need something easier than cowboying. I think I'll try law enforcement. That seems to be easier. So he became the city marshal of Henrietta. In 1895, he went north to Alaska. North to Alaska. <laughs> He wasn't looking for uh, Sarah Palin, however. He was looking for gold. He went up and he pursued gold. He worked the gold mines, the gold towns for seven years. He learned it was an even easier way than finding gold. That is, take the money from those who discovered the gold. So what, what this young man who's adopted the name of Tex, that's Tex Rickard, learned that he could make money running gambling tables. He also learned up there in the Klondike area up in Nome, in Dawson, Alaska, that he could make money by putting on surprise facts. He got this idea one night, and this young local guy, a local prospector named Frank Sleeman, got drunk, was picked on by the local bully whose name was Biff Hoffman. Biff Hoffman. And Biff Hoffman sucker punched him, and Tex Rigger decided, look, let's get a rematch. I'll bring you guys in here, we'll charge admission. He said, Frank, I think you can kick this guy's butt. But I'm going to give you a chance. So they organized some actual ticket prices, ticket sales, and they came in, and the rematch, this bully named Hoffman got knocked out with one punch in the first round. But the bottom line was everybody got paid. It was probably the very first tough man contest ever.